Trend alert. Communism. I want more of this. What is this place? Heaven? Hello, welcome to another amazing video. Today, we are touring the Amana colonies and dipping our toes into the murky waters of Christian communism. <laughs> Somebody's head in Nebraska just exploded. We'll get into it. The Amanda colonies are seven adorably quaint little German villages smack dab in the middle of Iowa. They give a taste of a communal, rural, European lifestyle right here in the American heartland. Today, they're a tourist destination highlighting their communal history and heritage arts like carpentry, metalwork, and textile arts. This one's ticking all the boxes. Let's start where all videos should. The beginning. Why are these small German villages here in Iowa? Pause, if you're not into history stuff and you just wanna to get to the goofs and gaffs of the walking tour, go ahead and skip to here. And sure, if you just wanna to skip to the Christian communist part and just jump right to arguing in the comments, go ahead and skip to here. Let's begin. The beginning goes all the way back to 1714 in Germany. Oh yeah, wow, that's very cool. When a group of families started to become dissatisfied with the dogmatism in the Lutheran church. And there's too many dogs in this matism. It's too much with the rituals, with the going through the motions. They participated in the religious movement called pietism, which emphasized personal experience of salvation, deeper personal connections with God, and all you can eat pie day. Cause pie is um, delicious. Oh, no, no, it says, and ethical purity through holy living. I mean, we could, we could also do Pi Day. Just saying. The group that would come to settle Amana called themselves the community of true inspirationalists. Not these fake inspirationalists you see all the time with the Lutheran, the Baptist, <laughs> don't even get me started on the Catholics. An interesting fact about the community is that they believe God still spoke through individuals as he did the prophets of the Bible and would look to community members with the gift of inspiration. These individuals were called Verksoig, which roughly translates to tool. Imagine you have the gift of speaking the word of God onto our earthly plane and everybody's just like, <laughs> what a friggin' tool. That's not the way they meant it, but I'm just saying. Radical pietists supported separation from the Lutheran church, including taking their kids out of the public Lutheran schools. <laughs> and putting them into their own community-based schooling. Well, this sucks. This separation from the church resulted in persecution from the state, and the true inspirationists decided they had to... Get out of me right now. They hightailed it to America, land of tribal reservation property now for sale under the U.S. Indian Removal Program? Ooh. That's a big yuck. They set up shop in upstate New York near Buffalo and founded the Ebenezer Society with a constitution that ratified their communal way of living. Having lived in Chicago, I know what it feels like to be ratified. But just like everybody else who's ever been to Buffalo, they said, no, we gotta get out of here. Their community was growing to the point where they needed more land, but Buffalo was growing at a rate that increased the surrounding land prices to unattainable levels. The city's growth and ever-increasing proximity also concerned the elders that the city folk might become a bad influence on the community. It is just absolute debauchery in 1850s Buffalo, New York. My back shot sound like bongo. So, they sent search parties all across the nation to find America's next top Christian communist settlement location. And they settled on the newly founded state of Iowa, with its ample space and government land grants. They found the perfect picturesque location right by the Iowa River and purchased the lands in 1855. Now, I am from Iowa, so I may be biased in this point, but I understand why they settled there. Lots of places in Iowa are quite nice. And I hear disbelief, but that's cause you don't know. You've never been to Iowa. People don't go to Iowa. That's part of the charm. It's like one of those 
Amazonian tribes that have never been contacted by the outside world. You're either born in Iowa or you've never been there in your entire life. There's no in-between. The Amana colonies were born in 1855 and they formed the Amana Society as their governing body. By 1862, all seven villages that we know today had been built. By 1908, their population had grown to 1,800 and they owned $1.8 million in assets. <laughs> Baby, what rich? Or no, sorry, the, the communal common fund is rich. Speaking of, let's dip our toes into what exactly Christian communism is or isn't and what it looks like in practice. For starters, Christian communism is only communism by definition. That is to say it's totally unrelated from the Marxist Leninist communism that is most widely recognized and understood today. You know, it's it's not this or this or this. It's it's this and and this and and even this. In fact, most Americans that we would consider to be Christian communists and their descendants would probably prefer the term communalist, which is the term that Amanda uses. In this case, it's pretty much the same thing. But Communism equals scary, so don't say that. Okay, well, if Christian communism isn't communism, communism, what is it? Well, for starters, instead of basing their societal beliefs on the Communist Manifesto, they base it on the Bible. Some believe the early Christian church, as described in the Acts of the Apostles, could be described as an early form of communism. That communism is Christianity in practice and hold on to your butts, that Jesus was the first communist. Now, I don't know about all that, but that's the theory behind Christian communism. Now again, the Amanda colonies are certainly not out there saying, this was communism. It's more of like, in hindsight, looking at it, I think they kind of did communism. But let's go over some of the details and you tell me. I mean, let me ask the audience. There was a whole government apparatus in the Amana colonies. The Great Council of the Brethren, also known as the Board of Trustees, oversaw the conduct and affairs of the Amana society as a whole. Right underneath them, groups of elders led each village. The elder groups would then appoint the foremen for each industry. You know, you're gonna work in the kitchen, you're gonna work in the farm, and you're gonna be the doctor. Could you? Look at this rash real quick. Each community member was given a yearly allowance from the common fund, $40 to $100 for men, $25 to $30 for women. Well, this sucks. Now, why did women get so much less? Well, the women are smaller and they don't have pockets. So like, where would they even put the money? Men trying to come up with any excuse to explain the wage gap. The money could be spent at the village stores for goods outside of the essentials provided by the community. Your home was provided by the community and all your meals will be provided through one of the 55 communal kitchens. No cooking was done at home. Food and housing covered? I volunteer! I volunteer! I volunteer as tribute! Each kitchen was run by a kusha boss or kitchen boss and employed multiple community members. They served 30 to 45 people, all meals, all day, every day. In the communal kitchens, men and women sat separately and meals were not social affairs. So they mostly just ate in silence. My people. Normalize, don't talk to me while I'm eating. I have food in my mouth. Don't talk to me. Your food is getting cold and you're spitting spinach on my face. Every able-bodied person would work to the best of their ability. Kids would even join in on the work. In addition to learning reading, writing, and math at school, they would also process seed corn and pick fruit. And I like this idea. Of course, the channel has historically been pro-child labor. It's my favorite fact to share. We're actually the number one pro-child labor YouTube channel on the platform. Hello, let's celebrate that. You know, this idea of looking at school as a, as a built-in factory of workers is good. Hey kids, welcome to iPhone class. Your homework is to manufacture 12,000 iPhones by the end of the week. 
To wrap up the Christian communism section, no, the Manic Colonies don't call themselves Christian communism, but I don't think just calling it communalism tells the whole story. When we start talking about the government structure, the common fund, the sort of from each according to his ability, to each according to his need sort of sensibility. I mean, I was walking around the museum like, communism. This sounds like communism. This is what communism theoretically is supposed to be. But that's me looking back with the benefit of hindsight, comparing and contrasting different historical groups and actions to the community of true inspirationalists. It was just life in the Amana colonies. Great. But what else is going on? Church, church, so much church. The church was run by the board of trustees. The service you attended where you sit depended on your age and or status. You sort of get drafted on the different teams. Women and very young children sit in the back. Older children sit up front where they can be supervised. Men and women sit in separate sections. And older people and in-betweeners attended their own separate service. In-betweeners meaning people in their 30s and 40s is so melodramatic. I'm not middle-aged. I'm in the between. Okay. Services were held 11. Count them. 11 times a week. That's Wednesday, Saturday, twice on Sunday, and then, then, then. Oh, yeah. Every night, New York's hottest club is not the bet. Parentheses, night prayer. Coming down to church every night for prayers and hymns. The community enjoyed almost a century of peace, prosperity, and harmony. Then everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. The fire destroyed the flour mill and badly damaged the woolen mill. Just in time for the Great Depression. Great Depression, hey, that, I call that a Tuesday night. At the same time, many community members were starting to seek the personal freedoms of life outside of a communal society. Communism. The great change happened in 1932 and dissolved the communal society into a non-profit, a man of church society that carried on the religious traditions for the community and a for-profit, a man of society that inherited the lands and economic assets of communal amana. It carried on the communal industries and communal members were given stocks in the company as well as jobs in the newly capitalist ventures. Oh, to experience capitalism for the very first time. It tastes so. Mm -mm, good. If you've heard of Amanda before, it was probably on a fridge or a dishwasher or a microwave. The Amanda Corporation was founded not long after the great change and is still a well-known appliance manufacturer today. It was bought out and is now under the Whirlpool umbrella brands. In fact, if you have an appliance under the brand name, Amana, Gen Air, KitchenAid, Maytag, or Whirlpool, there's a chance it was made in a factory on the outskirts of a small rural German village in Amana, Iowa. That's pretty cool. All that said, the traditional industries do still exist, albeit in smaller operations, and you can visit, see, experience, and learn all about it, which is what we're about to do in the walking tour portion of this video. We are boots on the ground in the Amana colony. I started my summer stop at the Amana Heritage Museum just to get a little taste of all that history we just went over. You can see all sorts of artifacts from the communal times. They have original church documents. The quiet midnight, I didn't know anybody could hear me. Handwritten testimonies from the Verkzeuge, the inspired spiritual leaders of the community. From the makers of cursive comes cursive Alf Deutsch. You want to read what that says? Best of luck to ya. And trend alert, this year's hottest fashion is long black cloak. Cover your entire body with long black cloak. Long black cloak pairs great with black hat, black shawl, black shoes. Find the light of God by becoming darkness in your long black cloak. This is a recreation of a kinderschule or a preschool setting. Kids took naps, played games, ate snacks, and the... Uh, drink coffee? Probably my favorite fact of the day. These toddlers are fully caffeinated. Also, their toys were lit. Look at these elaborate doll houses. I will say some of the actual dolls do have very blank stoic expressions that, that feel very dirty. Caring for doll is not fun. It is job. Speaking of jobs, how about a round of everybody's favorite game, laundry. 
Speaking of laundry, over to the wash and wood shed, where the real laundry room has seen better days. I mean, surely not, but this room just feels like many, many people have been murdered here. They have all sorts of old laundry tools on display. And hey, are you tired of soft soaps for sensitive skin? Try Acme Bath Break. Beat bacteria into submission with the only soap that rubs your skin clean off. Acme Bath Brick, the brick you bathe with. Some residents grew tobacco, dried it, and used it for pipes and cigars. Nothing takes the edge off of another long day of preschool like coffee and a cigarette. This is broken. Why do I live like this? I don't know. This is a cabbage cutter. Its sole purpose is to cut cabbage. Listen, when you want to eat an incomprehensible amount of sauerkraut, you adapt and you overcome. Alcoholics rejoice because German drinking culture was alive and well in the early Amanda colonies. Beer and wine making and drinking was a part of the lifestyle from the start. Everyone got a punch card for the annual allotment, 12 gallons for men, 6 gallons for women. I would also like to receive an allotment of wine by the gallon. I love it! The official quote says overindulgence was not tolerated. However, this quote is golden. The men, years ago, they used to get wine, a glass of wine at 9 o'clock in the morning, and then they got wine at noon, at 3 o'clock, then 5 o'clock again. My dudes are drinking four a day and starting at 9 in the morning. I mean, the kids are all crunk on coffee, the adults are all wasted. What is this place? Heaven? This is an antique outhouse. I've always wondered how they clean those, but not anymore. This bucket was euphemistically called a honey dipper, which is just awful information that I have learned against my will. This is a human poop scoop and it looks used. I can't believe it, but we are leaving the Heritage Museum on that note. I'm sorry, that's the last thing I saw. I, I saw that and I said, I'm getting out of here. To Grandma Heaven. Heritage Designs quilting and needlework is magical and expensive, but mostly magical. Hey, quality handcrafted goods aren't cheap. You want to quilt for less, buy the supplies and make it yourself. It's totally worth stopping in, saying hi, looking around. I mean, this is cozy headquarters. Joanne wishes. During my summer stop, they were celebrating Oktoberfest in July. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It beat the second name they considered. Come get drunk in this barn. There were also some remnants of the Verst Festival. Just a big old sausage fest. I checked out the Creative Colony gift shop and it is absolutely in the running to be Grandma Heaven too. I love little signs with sayings on them. I mean, these are so wholesome. Everybody wishes they had a mom like you. I never dreamed I'd be this crazy grandma with the cutest grandkids ever, but here I am. Oh, what's this one? They say I'm cocky. A fart is a wish your butt makes? No, I didn't fart. My butt just blew you a kiss? Oh, I take it back. I take it all back. Creative Colony is a cute, adorable place for trinkets and accessories. Some of the signs are cute and the rest are hilarious. Gotta stop at the bakery and cafe. All sorts of German baked goods. I can neither confirm nor deny whether or not I consume a cinnamon roll the size of my face. And if I did, it was delicious. Down the street, the Noble Stone has all of the crystals. The vibes in here are electric. My, my chakras are all aligned. My third eye is open and I am ascending. Hey, which crystal causes people to like and subscribe? If you are enjoying this video, please do the thing. Also, turn on notifications, because if you don't, you're gonna be missing videos. Daniel, what's your posting schedule? I'll never tell. Thank you for subscribing. The general store is overwhelming in the best way possible. It is a visual assault, a feast for the eyes. And if you're ready to throw down some cash, a feast for the stomach too. My stomach just so happened to be full of a cinnamon roll about the size of a bowling ball. So I abstain. But honestly, I'm coming back. I love this place. This was near the end of summer, so they had all their fall decorations up. 
I'm moving in. This is a store, I don't care. I live here now. They also feature my favorite style of product, which is unnecessarily masculine branded essentials. Men bar, man, face and body. Soap for men. They're all scented like alcohol for some reason. Because men are supposed to smell like alcoholics. This guy smells like booze. And that's a man. And hey, what's next door to the general store? Why, the international Christmas market, of course. Now, as a reminder, this was all filmed in July. Every day is Christmas in the Amanda colonies. Hey, if it ain't broke, sell it to the people. All I'm saying is if you really love me, you'd buy me the $800 wiener dog bench. Margie Jane's sister of Mary Jane, if you catch my drift. <laughs> no, it's another cute shop with tchotchkes, accessories, trinkets, and the like. I do have one question though. Why is there a bike on the roof? Cha, dude, I just like forgot where the ground was, bruh. The Main Street has all sorts of restaurants and wineries. I gotta say, if you're trying to have a romantic alfresco dining night in Iowa, even in the just Midwest in general, this is kind of the spot. I believe in, in dreams and romance all over again. Even the newly built gas station looks like it's from the old German village. They're committed to preserving the history and the culture and I respect that a lot. The Amanda Woolen Mill is the only remaining textile mill in the state of Iowa and was one of the first industries formed by the community. They still weave textiles in their original 1855 building and sell them in an adorable gift shop. They got woven ways for all your woven needs. Uh, new best friend alert. That's my best friend. Look at this Today little guy. He's just a little you. guy. Ooh. Everything here is softer than you can imagine. They don't make stuff like this anymore. Look at these little finger puppets. You'd have to be very whimsical and fun to buy those. Have you heard the story of the angel and the ass? I can say that because I'm I'm talking about a donkey and not a butt. This butt was made for kissing, and that's just what it'll do. Siri, delete my channel. I also bought a corn bed. This is actually non-negotiable. If you go to a manna, you are legally required to purchase a corn pen. Yeah, they have plenty of fun and whimsical items in the mercantile. Ever heard of dog beer? With flavors like crotch sniffing ale and mailman malt liquor. Most of them are meat flavored and I'm sure dogs love them. But to me, I thought it tasted disgusting. Another very cool heritage industry you can check out is the Amana Furniture and Clock Shop. You can actually watch the craftspeople make their wares in one of their wood shops. And fun fact, Amana has the largest privately held timber holding in the state of Iowa. Local craftsmen use local wood to make products that they sell locally. It doesn't get more local than that. Imagine being in the clock room at noon. Probably feels like an earthquake. P.O.B. Oh it's 12 o'clock noon. These clocks broke my brain. First, because I couldn't figure out how to make them work. Very embarrassing. And then, what in the world? Why does it do that? This is the kind of genius that only comes from a clockmaker who has spent a lifetime inhaling the fumes of wood glue and clock oil. I want more of this. And the music? straight bangers. I hear you all these modern clocks wear the classic old German style cuckoo clocks. They got them. Now this is whimsy. You can get one for the whole family, sharing a tender moment, or this one is me. 305, I'm getting drunk outside. On a more serious note, they do have beautifully crafted urns, which brings us to our favorite game, Urn or Decorative Box. America's favorite game show. Are these boxes holding trinkets and tchotchkes or the ashes of a loved one? Open that box for 50-50 chance of trauma. <laughs> I'm happy to say I did make a friend on my last visit. This cat was very friendly or just hungry. Maybe a combination of the two. Regardless, we are now best friends. That's my best friend. To the end, end. Me and you. Ooh. Ooh. Christmas? 
year-round Oktoberfest year-round historic church and communal kitchen closed both were closed when I went through both times I still stopped by the buildings just to check them out you can barely see into the church but with the magic of the internet and our imagination, we can take a peek inside. And you can really see one of the biggest reasons why the radical pietists separated from the Lutheran church is because they wanted to do sideways church. We do things a little different here. This isn't your grandpa's church. We do it sideways. Which honestly does make a lot of sense. Like were the people in the back pews of the big cathedrals really hearing the sermon? I don't think so. Sideways church. Let's talk antiques. A man has got them. I don't know what the record is for highest number of antique shops per capita, but a man has got to be on the list. I stopped in to Grapevine Antiques to get a taste. I have a theory. I think antiquers are just kleptomaniacs that go across the country stealing people's stuff. Exhibit A. A bucket of keys. Where did these come from if not your own pocket? Exhibit B. License plates? Are these from stolen cars? I'ma need somebody to run these numbers real quick. I think I just found a box of cold cases. Exhibit C. These aren't even old. These are just from down the street. Bold, brazen, thievery. Support your local antique store. Next to the antique store is the Amanda Meat House and Smoke Shop. They've been handcrafting meat since 1855. Every meat you can imagine, every shape, every size, they got it all. The smokers run in just right in the middle of the shop. They've got a big operation you can order online and they'll ship to all 50 states and Canada. Get your friends a meat box and make sure you subscribe to meat monthly the best meat based magazine in the biz it's just the catalog but they know what they're doing with these photos if i didn't have a cinnamon roll the size weight and circumference of a whole rotisserie chicken steaming in my stomach i would have swallowed a whole two pound pack of beef sticks raw so many things here are sold in very large quantities. I'm like, <laughs> challenge accepted. You guys, our final stop of the video. Since my last visit was right before Christmas, I was able to visit the Tannenbaum Forest. They transformed the Fest Hall barn into this winter wonderland with a forest of Christmas trees. It's festive AF. Festive and fun. Each tree is decorated by a different group or business and it's fun to see what everybody does with that each year. These guys decorated their tree with empty beer cans. We love to see it. But babe, I know I said I wasn't gonna drink tonight but I'm decorating. It's for the tree. This one is just gorgeous. And, and what's that quote? If a kiss was a snowflake, I'd send you a blizzard. Well, that's called love bombing and that's a manipulation tactic. This one is simple, classic, beautiful, oh, but, but be careful about, about putting hats on top of things around this time of year. We saw what happened to Frosty. Somebody, oh, he needs boy. some milk. I'm not here to cyber bully children, so middle schoolers, good job. This is my favorite tree, the Colican water tree. They just cut out pictures of their water heaters and filters and just put that on the tree as the ornaments. I love it. 100 out of 10. You win a gold star. This one is like fairy garden tree. It features an alternative take on the nativity story. Like, you know, what if Mary and Joseph were mermaids and Jesus? was a lobster, makes you think. The safe haven of Iowa County tree shows all sorts of animals in various states of distress. Dogs and cats stuck in a tree. These little cats down here, they're barely hanging on. And then, oh, this one is just heartbreaking. This little puppy on the tricycle is driving without a license and under the influence of alcohol. Sounds like this little guy needs to be rescued from himself. Need some distraction. This book tree is so cool. And think about it. Tree becomes paper. Paper becomes book. Book becomes tree again.
Domana colonies take you back to a simpler time, to a, a European farming village where your only daily concern was, when's my next glass of wine? And today, it's just the quaintest, coziest place I've ever been. If you like history, German culture, grandma stuff, the Domana colonies are an absolute must visit. I saw everything in this video just by stopping through on a random day at a random time. If you plan out a trip, this isn't even the half of it. A fair warning, you just might leave wanting to join a Christian communist community. And I don't know if there's any good ones out there right now. Thank you for watching another amazing video. Please make sure you're subscribed and turn on notifications so you know when I post my next video. We're going a little out of order from the summer road trip, but the next video should be the foretold walking tour through Miramount Castle. Is it haunted? Kinda seems like it. Stay tuned for that and more in 2024. Goodbye. Take four. Charge your batteries, people. <laughs> Siri, delete my channel.